I've come a long way since shooting my first video clips over 10 years ago, and I'd hope so because most of those early ones were pretty crap. So let's go ahead and take a trip down memory lane by reacting to five early film projects of mine. We'll pause right there. I was gonna do five, but it was just way too much cringe for me and for you, so I'm doing three. Okay, we've cleared that up. Back to the video. I already know I'm gonna be cringing so badly at this first one. So this was the first not necessarily the first short film I ever shot, but it was the first short film that I thought was kind of good. And it's crap. <laughs> so this is my old house in England that I don't live in anymore. What is this intro? <laughs> so cinematic, these these shots. I, I think I remember we were like blowing that, like just going <laughs> down the <laughs> on the curtain, thinking it was all cinematic. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, but I have star in this, which is why it's cringy. And so does my best friend Lewis back from England. Oh yeah. I felt so good about writing that in as credits. <laughs> so bad. <laughs> oh, the Inception song. Yeah, like context, Inception had basically just come out at this point. So I was just completely obsessed with it. I like watched it. God knows how many times, because at the time it was like the film that made me think, oh my God, I want to be a filmmaker, Inception, Christopher Nolan, oh, like, I love you so much. Hence why this whole thing is using the Inception music. Yeah, if you're wondering what that uh, wall is, we had mold on our wall at the time, so we had like this special paint on it, which is why it looks all white. <laughs> Stellar acting, oh. Leonardo DiCaprio would be so proud. <laughs> Ariel, it's what I thought you knew. <laughs> oh. <laughs> the audio is so bad. <laughs> so cringy. Oh my god. It's past the cringe test already. We're not even one minute in. I was well happy with that transition shot. I remember for this, we put like, I think I watched something on YouTube where someone was teaching like how to do like water splatter or blood splatter on a lens. Hey, what's up? Andrew Kramer here. And I think we just put like a clear plastic thing in front of the lens and then I like, actually, no, that's not true. I literally just like got water on the lens and we didn't even know if it was waterproof, but we didn't care. We just did it <laughs> for the shot because we couldn't find the plastic thing to protect the lens. I'm also, we were shooting with like a camcorder. So like a big camcorder, like not a mirrorless camera. Like I don't even think the 5D was out when we made this. It was 2013, I think. So yeah, or the 5D was out, but my college just didn't have one. Every single scene is just like me staring or holding a position and then just like multiple angles of the thing. <laughs> Such a long montage sequence of me doing the same thing. And the same thing. Here's Adam doing the exact same thing again. I was trying to force myself to actually shed a real tear. And I think, yeah, like, so, th so that, that is a real tear. But in order to get that, we literally squirted onion juice in my eye because I just couldn't, could not cry. I tried so hard to like force myself, to like prod my eye. <laughs> and then we tried to squeeze onion juice in and then still I couldn't do it. And then eventually like we just put so much in my eye and I was just like watering like crazy. Then eventually I shed a tear. Things I do for the craft. Like I genuinely feel like if this didn't have the Inception music, it would like, I would have thought it was crap. <laughs> but I just thought, oh, Inception music, very emotional. And the, and therefore it makes this emotional as well. It doesn't. Ah, oh, a zip shot. <laughs> yeah, I think the bracelet got broken. So we had to put tape on it, so. <laughs> Oh, that transition. I was so proud of that. I was like, that looks so cool. It's shaky handheld. Initially, I like I was super noob filmmaker at this point. So I knew like what a Steadicam look was, but I genuinely didn't know like what device you needed to make it happen. And we had like this Manfrotto wheel thing, which is basically just like, I'll put an image on the screen here. It was like a looked like a car wheel and then you could put the camera in it. And I thought that was a Steadicam or like that would stabilize the shots a lot. And it didn't clearly like, apparently they said, oh, your hands are further away from the camera. Therefore it's more stable. It's literally like, it's not a big difference. <laughs> like, <laughs> and hence why it looks so shaky with that. Um, but I thought it looked amazing. I don't think gimbals were a thing in like 
2010, 2009 when this was made. 11 years ago, so yeah, like 2000... 2011. <laughs> Maths. The glide cam was and things like that, but my college didn't have one and nor did I or could afford one. We got such good lighting here, but the camera quality does not do it justice. Like in hindsight, this was kind of disrespectful. Like we just found a random gravestone in this graveyard and like used it as the basis of the story and we didn't ask them or anything. <laughs> in hindsight, it's pretty like hmm, questionable morals to, to just use someone's random gravestone for a shot. Uh, you can see what I was trying to do. I was trying to get these like sweeping glide cam, steady cam shots, but the gear we had just didn't do that. Uh, also, we didn't shoot slow motion because the camera couldn't, I don't think. So we had to deal with choppy slow motion. Yeah, and I didn't know anything about shutter speed, so you can't even see the thing that I'm throwing because there's so much motion blur on it. I remember grading this though. I, I don't even know what software it was. I don't think it was DaVinci, but I was so I was so happy with this scene. Like, oh my God, the colors, it looks so dreamy and like the blue bloominess. I used some effects. I, I think I used Final Cut 7 actually to do this. But yeah, looks crap. Oh, the emotions. That still kind of looked all right. <laughs> like, I discovered fishing wire at this point, which is basically this like re really invisible, f like see-through thread that I believe fishermen use, hence why it's called fishing wire. I was so fascinated by the fact that you can just pull it and move stuff and on camera, you can kind of barely see it. I got, now you would definitely be able to because of like a higher resolution of cameras, but at the time with this crap quality, you really couldn't see when you maneuvered it and pulled stuff with it. And I thought it was so cool. I mean, you can kind of see it. It's funny because when I look back, this is kind of a music video. It's not even a short film. Like I think I literally decided what music I would use before I even came up with a narrative. I had the Inception song like playing around in my head and then I knew I wanted to build a narrative around it. So in a way, like I kind of made my, my first short film was a music video. <laughs> but yeah, wow, um, what a terrible short film. But hopefully it shows you, hey, like, this is, a, filmmaking is a skill that you can absolutely go from complete noob to all right, and hopefully one day really, really amazing. Next clip. So this is the first music video that I ever made ever. So it has a special place in my heart because I still think it's all right from what I remember. I haven't watched it in a while. So let's check it out. Oh yeah. The song is still a banger. We got so lucky with the lighting. Like it was just perfect, like low autumn sun. And we had, we just got the last hour of it, like the golden hour of it, just for this whole sequence of the moving the smoke around. I'm so lucky with the weather, it was crazy. That underwater shot is a GoPro, believe it or not. I think we used a GoPro that didn't have, did it even have a, yeah, it must've had a screen, but I couldn't see it. Or did it have a screen? I don't remember. Did the old GoPros have screens or not? I just remember being underwater in a pool with my goggles and like trying to aim the shot, but not knowing what I was capturing. And then we just did it a few times. And then we just saw that one shot that was like 50 frames a second or even a hundred. And I was like, oh my God, it looks so cool. Smoke. Smoking girls, that's all you need to make a music video. Yeah, we built I mean, we built that whole background. So this is not green screen, this is like all real. We got Andy's dad to make this kind of board and cut holes in it. Or did we, I think we did it actually. We might've done it in Andy's dorm room. And then we just pan the lights through it. And it, with all the smoke, it made like a really cool kind of gobo pattern behind her. Yeah, we used no green screen in this, if you were curious. Oh, I remember like this shot. I had on my like cinematography business card for ages. Like I was super proud of, I did this shot. It's cinematic, Adam Grasso, cinematographer. Come to think of it, that's a really good shot. Like, that's the sun behind her. So yeah, like pure golden hour with this orangey smoke. And then you just have this like natural spot coming through it. I mean, minus the resolution and everything else, it still looks really nice. Coughing our guts up after this, the smoke was just like, Aah. yeah. And I think we were trying to bounce light in her face, and then the path was so narrow that we just couldn't bounce it back. So we just decided to backlight them and hope for the best that you could still see their faces. I mean, you can, but yeah, like would have been nicer to bounce some fill light into the face just to brighten them up a lot because yeah, it doesn't look so great. 
Yeah, even this, like, what this light is crazy in the background. Like, what is this? Look at it. We got so goddamn lucky. The sky was so epic. Yeah, this might be the first video that I graded in DaVinci Resolve, like, learned the software and just graded every single shot from scratch. Yeah, I've come a long way since then with DaVinci and grading in general. Oh, this with the flares. This was like the last thing we shot in the day. And I had no idea how bright the flares were and we only bought like a couple and we, so we didn't want to just use one to check exposure. So yeah, the, when she did light it, we it was, it was just all overexposed on camera because it was way too bright. <laughs> oh yeah, I remember this shot. We had a generator. LED lights sucked back then, like they were so crap and I could get loads of free Fresnel lights from my uni. And yeah, we had a generator and it was a pain in the ass to use because it kept dying and like I'd never used a generator before. I had no idea. And yeah, we got this shot. I think just before the generator died. <laughs> but I just have a vague memory of the, the generator just being a pain in the ass and we paid for it and it only caused us problems. Oh yeah. Dude, that's a cool shot. Like, look, look, at, look at the sun, like look at that. That's crazy that that's real. I think this was the first video that I ever used like a steady cam or a glide cam, at least like my own cinematography uh, video or music video. And yeah, like I was sprinting with her full speed and the glide cam, you can see it's like super shaky and not level, but you know, it looks pretty, it looks all right. It's passable. Yeah, it's all right. It's, you know, it is, it is what it is. Like obviously like the gear has evolved massively since then. It would be way easier to make this now, like with LED lights. Let's go, 431K views. So, you know, Femme, she's now called Laura and she's done some pretty big hits. Um, I think this video is even still on my website because I don't mind it. It's kind of nice. I'll probably take it off my website eventually once I fill this up with other projects. But in hindsight, a lot of this is like, we could have come up with more interesting concepts. We were lacking on ideas eventually of like, like what can you do in a music video to make it look cool? It's a vibey shots of them like this and vibey shots of like, we could have come up with more interesting concepts and use the studio elements better. It is what it is. It's pretty good for a first music video, I think. Oh, you're gonna love this one. This is a film that I shot in my secondary school. How many years ago? It was uploaded 14 years ago. So I was... 14 years old, I think. And it's bloody terrible. Oh, look at that iMovie title. <laughs> this is my school cafeteria. So bad. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. So, so, so some context for this. The TV show Heroes was pretty popular back during when we shot this. So we basically made like a Heroes spoof everyone has powers and they use them within the school to get away from the bullies in this scenario but my friend gary has super speed oh how did we do that incredible i think we did that and we were like oh my god that looks so cool that he runs and then the camera pans and it's still one take look at the pixels you guys see the individual pixels on the screen and then the door opens. That's literally our friend Gary, who <laughs> just ran past, I think, this pixelated face on the screen. And then the door opens. And yeah, we had someone behind the door, obviously, uh, opening it as if he'd left. Incredible. The continuity. The door is already open and then it's not open here. Yeah. <laughs> I don't think I edited this, actually. I think I just, like, did cinematography. <laughs> oh my God. So bad. My cringe haircut. So yeah, like I have constipated telekinesis ability and can move my fishing wire, you see? see? See, to all you budding filmmakers out there, even the crap stuff that you do initially will come back to help you in later projects. Like this was the fish wire origin. This is the first project that I ever used fishing wire on. And as you can see, it looks pretty amazing. Oh. He's a plan. Whoa. Incredible. Incredible filmmaking. Whoa. What is it? What's what's in there? Oh, it's it's Ellis. Ellis, my friend, who turned into a piece of paper, then gets thrown in the bed. <laughs> I love it. That's me in the back there of the geography class, I think it is. Freeze, fr freeze frame effect. Oh my God. 
Whoa, he teleported. Oh, so convincing the effect. <laughs> this green screen. And I think this was the first time I ever used a green screen as well. My memory of this is that we knew it was crap. Like we knew it was dumb and stupid and crap and that's what made it funny for us. So yeah, don't think that like, I thought this was good at the time. <laughs> Definitely didn't. Why is this typography? Like, why, why, why did we think like that looked good? Like even if this video wasn't 480p, this is crap. Like you can't even read this text. What a cringe fest that was. But you know, like it's nice to look back at your old projects and have a cringe. Cringing means you have improved. Cause if I wasn't cringing at that and I was like, yes, Wow, this story, Adam, it's so deep. And like, how, how did I come up with that at such a young age? Like, well, I was a prodigy filmmaker all along. Then I probably not progressed at all. It's nice to, to, to be able to look back at that and see how far I've come. And maybe to give some of you guys hope that you will get better as a filmmaker if you practice and learn from your mistakes and just just make stuff and put stuff out there. And you too will also cringe at yourself looking constipated while pretending to move a mouse with fishing wire. Check out this other React video here where I look at some of the most ridiculous 90s music videos. Hit that subscribe button if you haven't done so already because if you do, I'm gonna get Hans Zimmer, my best friend, to come and compose your next short film for you completely free of charge. Thank you all so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.